An envelope sitting on top of Desti's shelf. Looks like a letter. Academy Administrative Office. Hey. It's got quite a layer of dust. It's probably been sitting there for a while. Let's see what's inside. Isn't it kind of rude to go peeking? So question. We'd be worse off not reading it. I suppose. When I opened the dust-covered envelope, I found a single sheet of paper inside. I began to read the words arranged there on the paper. Notice from the Academy Administrative Office. For many years, the Academy has dedicated itself to the cultivation of world-class talent. The Academy, operating under special government sanction, has a long-standing tradition of producing the highest quality graduates in, it, in all fields, many of whom are still flourishing in society. Nevertheless, it has come to pass that this glorious work must, for the time being, be placed on hold. We bitterly regret having to make this decision, but the grave problem which has arisen has our hands tied. However, this does not spell the end for the Academy. We fully intend to reinstate operations as soon as a aforementioned problem had been remedy, has been remedied. In conclusion, we would like to offer our sincerest thanks to everyone who has provided their support and assistance over the years. And in at Adium, we would like to make it known that we are waiting to receive approval from the relevant branches of the government before formally ceasing operations here at the Academy. What the? <laughs> I see. Fascinating. It seems the Academy has, offic ha has officially speaking closed its doors. And guessing by how much dust is on, the on this letter, it probably didn't happen recently either. It could be feasible... Uh, feasibly have been written more than a year ago. So you're saying it's possible the Academy's doors have been shut for at least that long? <laughs> the Puppet Master probably commandeered the abandoned Academy to use as the stage for his game. But when I got here just a few days ago... <laughs> there was nothing to suggest the school had been shut down or anything. <laughs> Besides, if the Academy had been closed, wouldn't news of that have spread around some? Especially if, as you said, it's been out of operation for a year or more. And yet, I never saw anything like that on the net. Somebody. That would be the puppet, puppet master's hand at work. That's how he lured us all here. This is the kind of person who would build a courtroom and an execution ground inside a school. <laughs> None of this should come as a surprise, though. Um, though, all of this assumes that the, that the leather is the real thing. If it is legitimate, though, the answer's... That answer is one of the biggest mysteries of the Academy. The reason we're the only students here is because the school's already been shut down. <laughs> A simple yet elegant solution. Also, what do you think about this? We bitterly regret having to make this decision, but the grave problem which has arisen- What? Okay. Has arisen, um, which has arisen has our hands tied. However, this does not spell the end to the Academy. We fully intend to reinstate operations as soon as the aforementioned problem has been remedied. The grave problem mentioned here? It sounds like the reason the Academy was forced to shut its doors. But do you think it could also have something to do with what's happening to us now? Most. If it does, then this could turn into a valuable clue for us in our search for the Puppet Master's objective. However, at this point in time, we can't really say either way. <laughs> That knowledge only the Puppet Master has. Puppet Master's objective. His reason for trapping us here, doing this to us. If we figure that out, we can get out of here? Or... Anyway, I've got a pretty good idea what's here on the second floor. I can't say I didn't expect it, but there doesn't seem to be a way out on this floor either. I guess I just gotta hope the others found something more useful. Well, it's probably about time I headed back to the cafeteria. Good work, soldiers. Does anyone have anything to report? Somebody. There's a library. Yes. There's a pool. A pool and changing rooms with a whole bunch of exercise equipment. Dug. However, there is nothing resembling an exit. Yeah. Naruhodo. Despair not, my friends, for I have made a groundbreaking discovery. Seyo. Listen to this. We now have access to the storeroom and the large bath here in the dormitory. Yikane. 
There's a wealth of food, clothing, and supplies in the storeroom. Why, it's an exor it's an exercise in excess. <laughs> now we can snack whatever we want. <laughs> Try not to forget that leaving your room at night is forbidden. Oh. And what about that important part, a way out? Well, uh, you see... Was there something in that storeroom we could use to bust out of this joint? I regret to inform. God damn it, guys. This ain't the time to be squealing about new places to jerk around in. We're trapped in here, god damn it. Trapped. You're supposed to be looking for a way out. <laughs> now, now, trying to find faults in everything we do isn't going to accomplish anything. Adaptability is all about being able to adapt. So let's enjoy being locked up together. Amen. Screw that. Well, for the time being, continue recon and if you find anything, you can make a report then. Yeah. So we're done for the day? Yeah. And just like that, the temperature of the room dropped 10 degrees. Is this the Puppet Master strategy? Build up our expectations and knock us back down? Ding, ding, ding. Dong, ding, ding, dong. Ding, ding, dong. It is 10 p.m. night time. Cafeteria and luck to wish you all fucking good night. We all agreed not to go wandering around during the night time. So I guess I've got no choice. Time to crash. Oh dear. Hey, Mr. Monokuma, can I talk to you about something? I hate myself. I don't have any unique hobbies or special talents I can brag about. My grades are average and my reflexes are nothing to write home about either. If I study, I could probably make it into some university, find some new friends, maybe even a girlfriend. And that's exactly what I hate about myself. I figured it out. My life is just one big cut and paste job, isn't it? An uninspired knockoff. Isn't that right, Mr. Monokuma? Hmm. Ding dong. Seven a.m. Oh yes, right. I just like to let you know that your lecture ideas have been updated. There's a new rule, so be sure to read it over and enjoy the new, more enriching academic environment. School rules have been modified. Verify the changes in your lecture ideas. It looks like the new okay. It looks like the new rule is the one he was talking about yesterday about not lending out electro IDs. But more importantly, I gotta get to the cafeteria. Um, school rules. La 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 la. Mandatory. The villain. If the villain is not correctly, everybody's like, we're forbidden to lend out. Oh. Forbidden lending out. Additional rules may be ap appended to this list if deemed necessary. Oh, so exciting. So exciting. Yes. Cafeteria. Is anybody hanging out? Morning time. It's a brand new day. Morning time. Boom. Hey, Nagi. Morning. Morning. Is everyone already here? Nah, dude. Still waiting on Togus and Ish. Togami's no surprise, but Ishima Ishimaru? He's almost never late. <laughs> Ishimaru went to Togami's room to assist him um, with his chronic lateness. 
He should be back soon enough. Until then, we wait. <laughs> Waiting doesn't bother me, but um, but there is another issue. An issue? <sighs> I'm thirsty. Oi, oi. How the hell's that our problem? <laughs> Yamada, would you kindly make me a cup of tea? <laughs> me? <laughs> make that milk tea if you would be so kind. <laughs> Why me? <laughs> You bear the same plump form as the master of the cafe I used to frequent. That's her reason? Do be quick about it, please. I'm parched. Alright. Seemingly unable to refuse Celeste's order, Yamada waddled into the kitchen with a look of discontent. A few minutes later. Sorry to keep you waiting. The aroma of tea wafted through the cafeteria as Yamada returned carrying a tray in one hand. <laughs> I'm looking for <laughs> I'm looking forward to tasting it. <laughs> you might as well have made some for everyone while you were there. I reject your proposal out of hand. You don't even resemble my type. Oh, <laughs> all flows along the current of ca current of casualty. What? <laughs> <laughs> then allow me. With a smile on her face, Celeste reached forward and picked up the teacup. Uh. What's this? She tilted her head as she spoke. And then launched the cup at the wall. Okay. Uh. What? Terry, Terry, what are you doing, Miss Hare? <sighs> I cannot stand milk tea of this kind. Uh, uh. I am unable to comprehend. Let's say that hypothetically I was going to order a cup of tea at a nearby cafe. And when I do, the waitress asks me, would you like lemon or milk? In response, I would, I tell her I want milk tea. The waitress comes back with my tea. She brings me a small dish of milk. <sighs> I am the one who prefers to have the milk put in my tea as it's being brewed. Preparing it this way gives the tea its incomparable, more pleasant aroma. Further, choosing to add milk and lemon after the fact reduces the decision to, to that of picking a condiment. I, for one, question the legitimacy of glorifying such a choice as a menu item. <laughs> as such, I will only acknowledge royal milk tea, brewed directly in milk. If I were to describe the looks on everyone's faces, like deer in the headlights is about the only way I could do it. Uh, so this is how you thank me? Are you- for going out of my way to make you tea? <sighs> I understand you're frustrated. In a cafe that serves both milk tea and royal milk tea, the latter is always, always the more expensive. Certainly that's because it takes more work to brew. However, <laughs> what good is a menu item that doesn't take a little bit of effort to make? First of all, there is no menu item here. Shut your fucking trap! Go make me my goddamn tea, Porky! Wow! Yeah. Yes, Porky, I your service. Bring your tea right away! <laughs> ah. It's amazing how far a little imita uh, intimidation can go. Your personality changed. <laughs> Shit, man, that made me jump! <laughs> I don't like her. It looks like my first impression of her was right on the money. She's impossible to read. While everyone in the room was still trembling at our encounter with Celeste's true colors, the cafeteria door burst open and the person we were waiting for stepped through. Except... <clears throat> Attention soldiers. soldiers. We have an unusual situation in our hands. <clears throat> don't tell me Togami's dead! Tagami's not coming out of his room. I rang the bell a number of times, but he wouldn't come out. Uh, could he be pretending to be out? That would be ideal, but what if something happened to him? Everyone in the room understood what he meant by something, even without elaboration. Maybe we should split up and look for him. I'll have you know, I was planning to suggest the same thing. This is not the time to be trying to one-up each other. Alright, then I'll go try his room again. I won't stop ringing the bell until he comes out. Very well, the rest of us shall split up and search every elsewhere. Before we're really too late. 
Anyway, we gotta hurry and find him. Now, where might Tagami have gone? It's possible he might be exploring the second floor again. Hint, hint. Fuck you, Celeste. Just fuck you. Okay. Nope. Stairs! You know what? There's probably stairs on the other side. On the other side, but you know, I didn't see them. Nay. So you had the same idea? What? Based on what Tagami showed an interest in yesterday. You can make a pretty good guess as to where he is now, wouldn't you say? The thing he showed an interest in yesterday? What was that again? I opened the door to the library and stuck my head inside. And when I did, I let out a surprised gasp. Togami? Oh. Thank God. The scene I bore witness to was so so far outside my expectations, it caught me off guard. What are you doing? What does it look like I'm what does it look like I'm fishing or something? I'm reading. I'm reading, be quiet. Oh, sorry. Wait, no! What the heck are you doing? What the heck are you doing here? We were worried. We, we've all been looking for you. And what on earth possessed you to do such a thing? So we all agreed to have breakfast together in the cafeteria, remember? I agreed to that? Give me, give me a break. I can't even relax with a book around here. Togami clapped his book shut and then stood up slowly like a shadow growing beneath the setting sun. And as he did, everyone else came clamoring into the library, having apparently overheard our conversation. So this is where you've been, Togami? <sighs> the heck you doing, man? Mm -hmm. We were worried. <laughs> you had no reason whatsoever to worry about me. I was just reading a book. I've never read such a pedestrian novel before, but I thought it might be of some use in this situation. What were you reading? <laughs> Mystery novel. Hello. Did you perhaps intend to use one of those trick one of uh use of one of its tricks? <laughs> Don't be stupid. What he said. <laughs> I'll just use them as inspiration. What? Pozenda. When it's my turn to play the game, I'll use a trick of my own making. It wouldn't be nearly as fun if I didn't. <laughs> it's not every day you get the chance to participate in such a palatable, tense game, you know. So there's no point in not enjoying yourself. <laughs> I was frozen in place. There was a clearly visible smile on Tagami's face. He actually looked like, looked like he was enjoying himself. Enjoying this twisted academic coliseum. <laughs> Game the hell you want about it. Enough crazy talk, you little bitch. <laughs> game is a game. And this is a game of life and death, where there can only be one victor. That's all there is to it. <sighs> a zero-sum game. Huh? <laughs> the turn comes from the game uh from game theory, a branch of mathematics. In game theory, a situation like this is referred to as a zero-sum game. When resources are finite, one person's gain results in an equal degree of loss among the other players. Uh, take poker, for example. Like a game of tug-of-war. Or a school entrance exam. A vast majority of social interactions can be described as zero-sum games. Each school emits a limited number of students, and your acceptance means another's rejection. And the same applies to the situation we find ourselves in now. Only in this case. The resource we're competing for is the singular title of successful villain. 
In other words, this will always this was always meant to be a game of King of the Castle. You're saying this is just King of the Castle? <laughs> That's why I said we need to adapt. If everybody stops wanting to get out, then there's no need to worry about getting caught up in the game. None. Why would you want to participate in in such a thrilling game? Why wouldn't you want to participate in such a thrilling game? As Sagami said that, he laughed again. His face contorted into a devilish grin. <sighs> the possibility of you losing hasn't even so much as crossed, my mu crossed your mind, has it? Of course not. <laughs> that shouldn't surprise me, coming from the successor of one of the world's leading financial giants. <sighs> I just think he's being cocky, dude. What the? And what happens if you die? Uh, yeah. I won't die. Not a chance. What the hell's your problem? You know, I'm surprised. The hell's about? That the archaic breed of misfits you were plucked from hasn't gone extinct yet. I'll fucking kill you. I'll tell I told you once and I'll tell you again. I will not be killed. We're just going in circles here. <sighs> Say as much as you want, it's no use. The concept of losing doesn't exist for him. He's the super duper high school scion, one of the one of the elite, groomed to inherit the Tagami group. From birth, he has had it drilled into his head that he's destined to, to succeed, and he's accomplished that. Games, tests, to him, these all exist for one purpose, to win, even if it means putting his life on the line. <laughs> Isn't that right? I'm impressed. You, you and I are one and the same. I too believe that games exist to be won. Shut that filthy mouth of yours and don't go comparing me to the likes of you. Oh my, oh my, I beg your pardon. <laughs> anyway, I do have one thing to say. I hope you all bring the same level of ambition. The game just won't be nearly as much fun. Fun otherwise. No, you, you can't. None. What was that about? What was that? Don't the... This this isn't a game. Our lives are at stake. We're all friends. We can't kill each other. <laughs> That's just not right. <laughs> friends? When did that happen? <laughs> huh? <laughs> We're not friends. No, it's the exact opposite. We're opponents. All vying for the spot on top of the hill. <laughs> Still... None. But, who said you can use that word? A uh, plebeian like you need need only agree with me. Uh, Boy. If you have something to say, say it. If you can't, then don't open your mouth at all. What a jerk. Sorry. The hell, man? You get some sick pleasure out of bullying people weaker than you? You make me sick. <laughs> And the buddy buddy act has started again. How long are you gonna keep this up? <laughs> Fuck you. None. Fuck you, really? <laughs> can, I can hardly believe my ears. It seems you're only capable of spewing simple minded, meaningless drivel. <laughs> That's it, you're dead. What the? Hey, calm down. <laughs> I am fucking calm. Uh, sure, you are. <laughs> In any event, I have no intention of continuing to work with you. I have no desire to waste my time on something so meaningless. As cooperating with my opponents in a game in a game of King of the Castle. Mean meaningless. Aria. And don't even get me started on those friendly meals together. Someone could slip me poison. And I have no interest in consuming my last supper here. <laughs> You're nothing but freaking theatrics. Jana. You're on your own from here. Count me out. Having said that, Tagami left the library not looking back once. We had no way of stopping him. The way his mind worked was far beyond our ability to comprehend. He's serious? <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> he ain't getting away with that. <laughs> but maybe he's right. You can't say for sure that nobody's going to slip poison into someone else's food. <laughs> Come on, you two, Fuka. Come on, you two, Fukawa, what's gotten into you? It's not like anyone here is going to be be any worse off without me. 
In fact, you want me gone, don't you? I disgust you! Nobody... No, nobody thinks that. You just think you don't think it, that's all, but in reality, you... You all think I'm vile! <sighs> bitch. This ain't your everyday persecution complex, dude. I get it, you want to get rid of me, don't you? All of you are thinking the exactly the same thing! Wait, hold on, Fukawa! <laughs> Let her be. No one can stop her when she's like that. What a lovely day. In the end, the morning assembly never happened. It just sort of fizzled into nothingness. And we all returned to our rooms. What a way to start the day. I'm already exhausted. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean I can't... I can't just spend the rest of my day doing nothing. I should find some way to take my mind off things. <gasps> Free time!